In this video, we're going to kick the tires on Azure and see if it'll work as the production home of a project that I'll be working on. I don't have an application just yet, but one is in the planning. I want to start off by doing the simplest thing that I can think of, deploying the sample code from the Node Getting Started Guide. I don't want to deal with the dependencies, build processes, or unit tests just yet. I want to do the least possible thing so that I can isolate any problems that I run into. Here's the app that I'm going to be working with, which is the canonical Hello World demo application from the Node.js website. I'll copy this code directly into VS Code without changing a single thing. Next, I'll run it to be sure that everything works. Not much of a surprise here. It works as expected. My friend K. Scott Allen suggested that developers think of Azure as a programmable data center, which I like. I'm a big fan of working with command line interfaces and, if I'm being honest, the Azure portal can be just a little bit difficult to figure out at times. For this video, I'll be leaning completely on the command line interface, but rather than rattle off commands from memory, I'm going to show you the process that I use to discover how to use this powerful tool. The first step is to be sure that you have the command line interface, or CLI tools, installed. You can download them easily online. The next step is to set your default subscription. Most people I know only have a single Azure subscription, but it's possible to have more than one tied to your Azure account. If you do, then be sure to set your default subscription using this command. Finally, I'll be working on Docker today, so if you're new to Docker, don't worry. I won't be doing anything that's crazy. However, you will need it installed if you plan to follow along. The first thing that I typically do in building a web application is to create a Docker file and also a make file. You don't need to use make. I like it simply because it helps with repetitive tasks, and I'm used to it. I'll fill out the Docker file using the simplest possible commands, pulling the image for Node, copying my code file into the container, and then exposing port 3000, which is the port number under which my application will run. We'll finally create the default entry command. I'm also a big fan of using shell scripts, but typing them is something I'm not terribly fond of. That's why I like to use make for common tasks that need to happen in a particular order. I'll add two targets to my make file, build and run. I'm going to name my application Velzi after the great Dale Velzi, one of the pioneers of surfing that used to live right down the road from me. I'll then create my Docker image by executing make build. Once that's done, I'll run it with make run. All right, let's open our browser and see if it worked and, uh-oh. This is a very common issue when you move your code into a Docker container. Understanding the difference between ports on the virtual machine running your containers and your host machine, which is running Docker. The problem I'm having is that Node is binding my app to 127.0.0.1, or localhost, over port 3000. This, unfortunately, is not translating correctly to the host machine. To fix this, I need to bind all the IP addresses within my virtual machine. To do that, I simply need to change my code to specify that the host is 000. Great, now I just need to stop my container, rebuild the image, and then run it once again. Let's see if it works. And it does. Final step is to publish the container to a public repository. I'll use Docker Hub for this for now, just to test things out. Later on, I'll want to be sure that this image is private, either at Docker Hub or using a custom registry. We'll deal with that in a later episode. Now let's try and figure out the CLI. I have the Azure command line interface, the CLI, installed, and now I have to figure out how to use it. Most CLIs will list off all the commands that you can execute, as well as a description of those commands. If the CLI is small, you'll also typically see various options and flags that you can set for each command. There's a lot of commands here, as you can see, but the key is not to get overwhelmed, which is really easy to do. I'm trying to find out how to create a web application, so let's stay focused and look for the word web. And there it is, right at the bottom, basically where I expected it. It would be nice if this description was a little bit more detailed, but for now it looks like this is what I need. Let's run the command AZ Web App and see what happens. We get an error message, as I was expecting, telling us that a subcommand was required. This is how the Azure CLI is constructed. There are parent commands that each have a series of subcommands to them. Reading the list here, we can see that just about every task that we can think of is covered with regards to a web application. We can get into all those various subcommands later on. Right now I want to focus, and I want to create a web application, so I'll use AZ Web App Create. And I'll follow the CLI's suggestion of using dash H, which is a standard way of asking for help with a CLI. This result is very useful. I can see at the very bottom what a successful command might look like. The options, however, don't mention anything about deploying a container. So let's scroll up and have a look around. And yep, right there I can see two things that are very useful. 
The first is that an application name is required, which makes sense. I also need a plan, which appears to be an app service plan, whatever that is, according to the details. The final thing I need is to create a resource group. If this is my first time working with Azure, I'll have no idea what any of these things are. Now at this point, I could quickly search the internet for answers to these questions, but I'd rather stay on target here and see how far I can go with a CLI before I get lost down any rabbit holes. Let's see if something just kind of makes sense. The things that you create inside of Azure are called resources. It could be a website, it could be a database, or anything. And it seems pretty straightforward to me that a resource group would be a group of resources, and it's a way to keep things tidy within Azure. We can find out how to create one by executing AZ one more time and looking for a command with the words resource or group. Scanning down the list, I see the group command right here, and it appears to be exactly what I need. I'll ask the CLI for help with the group command, and it shows me a list of all the subcommands and what they do. It looks like create will be what I need, which seems obvious. Let's see what's required for using create. I need to give the command az group create two bits of information. The first is a name, which makes sense, and then also which Azure data center that this group is going to live in. The details also tell me to run az account list locations to find out the names of the locations that I can use in this command. If I run that, the result is a pretty big splash of JSON. There are ways to make this read a little bit better, but again, I'm going to stay on target and I'll just sift through here and uh, take a look at what I think makes the most sense, which for me is using West US 2. So that's what I'll use. I'm going to call my resource group Velzi again after the name of my application, and with that, I'm ready to create my resource group. I once again see a JSON response from Azure telling me that everything has worked. All right, first job is done. When I asked AZ Web App Create for help, the help output said that a dash dash plan argument was required. The detail of that mentioned that we could create one using the command AZ App Service Plan Create. But that's about it. Now, the obvious question here is what the heck is an App Service Plan? This can be a little bit confusing because there are resources in Azure called App Services, and there are other resources called App Service Plans. Reading through the documentation can actually add to the confusion, unfortunately. So for this answer, I turned to my colleague, Scott Hanselman, who told me that I could think of an app service plan as the VM, or virtual machine, that my application will be running on. Even though an app service plan has nothing to do with a VM, they're conceptually equivalent. An app service plan is measured in terms of CPU cores, RAM, and storage capabilities, much like a virtual machine might be. You can search the internet for app service plan pricing and you're going to end up at a website with a table that looks like this. Now that we know all of this, let's create our plan. I'll add a dash H flag to the AZ plan create command so I can understand what I need to do next. The only required arguments for this command are a resource group name as well as the name for our plan. I can also add a few other options, which in my case are very important. The first is the dash dash is Linux flag. Now, if I don't set this, I'll get a Windows app service plan. In other words, like a Windows VM, which won't work with deploying Docker containers. I've learned this the hard way and rather than stumbling our way through it, I'll just tell you straight up, that's what you need to do. The next argument I want to pay attention to is the dash dash skew, because this will dictate how much I'll be paying each month. I've decided that a standard plan or S1 will do nicely for this application. Even though we're just testing things out, I want to see how the application will behave and how snappy it is, basically. So I'm going to set it to what I think my production setup will look like. I can see the list of possible SKU values by scrolling up and reading the details. Now note that a free plan won't work if you're planning on deploying a Docker container as I am, but I'm going to go with S1 anyway. Now that I have all that, I'm ready to create my app service plan. All right, we are almost there. I have my resource group and my app service plan. Now all I need to do is to come up with a name for my application and set the deployment image. If you recall, I have deployed the simplest node app that I could come up with to Docker Hub under the tag Rob Connery slash Velzi. That's the last piece of this puzzle. How do I tell Azure where to get the image? If you recall, executing the command az web app create dash h lists out all of the arguments that you can send in including one for deploying a Docker container, which I can specify using dash I. With that, my command is complete. 
As usual, we get a splash of JSON back, and if you get an error, read the messages carefully as they are typically quite detailed. There is one bit of JSON here that I do care about, and that is the URL to my new site. Let's copy and paste that and go have a look. Well, unfortunately, the startup process isn't very fast. All we've done up to this point is to tell Azure all the settings that go into running this web application. We haven't actually told Azure to start it. The good news is that we don't have to do that explicitly. We can just visit the URL. Now, the spin up time for a containerized web application can be as short as 30 seconds or as long as 10 minutes, depending on numerous factors. To better understand what's going on, let's head over to the Azure portal and turn on diagnostics and logging. You can do this through the CLI as well, but right now, this is the easiest thing that I can do. Once we're here, we'll scroll down, clicking on Diagnostic Logs, which is turned off by default. We'll select File System and then click Save. Now let's click on Log Stream. This will tail the logs for us so we can see real time what's happening in the background. As you can see, not a lot right now. And while we're waiting for the logs to appear, let's have a look at a very common problem that bites a lot of people when they first try to deploy a containerized web application to Azure. I've had this happen to me more than I care to say. Let's just say it's a lot. If your application uses a port other than the default web port, which is 80, you have to make sure Azure knows about that. And you do that by using the app setting called websites underscore port. Now, the other thing I could have done and probably should have done is to use the port environment variable within my node code. This is the preferred way of doing it. Okay, about three minutes have gone by. Let's see if our logs are telling us anything yet. The output shows that Azure is pulling our image from Docker Hub and is attempting to start it. Waiting for another 30 seconds or so, and we see something that isn't terribly exciting. A server error. <laughs> this can be really confusing, especially for .NET developers who recognize this as an ASP.NET error page. Our app service is supposed to be on Linux. What gives? What's this page doing here? The quick answer is that the server that sits in front of our container and routes traffic to it, the gateway or the proxy, whatever you want to call it, well, it's running Windows and it uses Microsoft IIS. When it can't reach our container, it's going to throw a 502 error, as you see. When this happens after a long wait, it typically means one of two things. One, our container hasn't started or, more likely, wasn't able to start due to some kind of error. Two, our ports aren't set up correctly. This time, I get lucky and refreshing the page does the trick. There it is. The address box indicates that the page is not secure, which isn't so good. We want to use HTTPS, and indeed we can. By default, we just put HTTPS right in front, and we're good. Now that we're all done playing around and testing things out, let's make sure that we don't have to pay for resources that we're not using. This is one of the primary benefits of using resource groups. We can delete everything we've just created with a simple command az group delete dash n and then the name of our group which in this case is velzi we'll be asked to confirm our choice and then we're all done well that's it for this very first azure cast i hope you've enjoyed it i look forward to making more